Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name's Philip and today I'm going to be talking to you about AI because people are coming to me saying that they're using AI to solve their mental health issues, which is fantastic, giving people the space and the tools to use in their day-to-day -day life. However, is there a part of this which is actually rather dangerous? Because we can go to an AI software and ask it questions and what sort of answer are people getting? What sort of help are people thinking is helping them to grow and develop? But could it actually be slowing us down? Could it put us in a box of feeling like we're moving forward, but staying very still? That's what I'm gonna to answer today. I get asked all the time, how can I not be anxious anymore? Let's type this into chat GPT and see what it says. The first one, understand your anxiety. That's great, understanding the triggers, what scenarios make you feel anxious, and educate yourself in terms of understanding actually what anxiety is, great. Adapt your lifestyle and your habits, regular exercise, balanced diet, adequate sleep. These are great, but I'm still feeling anxious. I've got something that I have to tackle. I don't know what to do. And that's, I mean, this, this is great. I understand what the trigger is, fantastic. I understand what anxiety is, great. I mean, I don't need a regular exercise. I've got an exam coming up. I've got something to do. I'm still feeling anxious. Deep breaths, okay. This will allow you a little bit of space away from that anxiety to just to live to give you a, a different perspective. I, I get it. This is gonna start to put your headspace in a different place because you're gonna be looking after yourself. But in the back of my head, while I'm deep breathing, while I'm using muscle relaxation, relaxation techniques, I'm still thinking, oh my goodness, I've got this thing that I need to prepare for. I need to get done. I mean, that's what I would say. Understand what you're anxious about. Let's start preparing for it. Cognitive behavioral techniques, aha, some more therapy. Here, change negative thoughts. Okay, I'll just change them like that and then the anxiety will go away. And this is something which I help my clients with in terms of a therapy session. So unfortunately, it takes a little bit of time to start to change the way that someone acts, feels and thinks about a situation. I mean, this is a great technique and a great step, but you can't do it on your own and have it last for a long time. It will just be a short-term fix, but no long-term results. Gradual exposure. Gradual exposure yourself to situations, make you feel, yeah, okay, fair enough. You know, get used to that situation. I do techniques with my clients, helping them to, to feel that angst and change the narrative so that, okay, we feel it, but we can still go one or two steps further on in a different way and start to control it. I mean, that's, that's, that's okay, but, but, we don't always have that ability to get the exposure that we want. In principle, it works. But in reality, we don't always have that space to do so. And we still don't have an understanding about diffusing the anxiety. We've just got this list. But yeah, go and seek help. Fantastic. Talk to someone. Yes, fantastic. Talking to people is great at diffusing that emotional tension. But talking to a friend, they might say to you, oh, well, don't worry about it. Everything will be fine. Not everything. Everything might not be fine. It's not up to them to, to help you through it. It's up to them to hopefully give you some support. But who do we trust? How do we know the right person to trust? This again is about understanding that person's support network. Imagine you read that and you've got no friends and no family. Who am I gonna to speak to? That anxiety is gonna build and also that sense of anger, shame, guilt, and just sadness that you've got no one to, to talk to about your anxiety. It's just astounding to me how much is here, which is go and seek help outside of the anxiety, but no one's talking about actually dealing with the anxiety. And this is something which again, a mental health professional can help you through. Engaging in relaxing activities. How relaxed are you gonna feel if you're anxious about something in the future? And they say, okay, just go and take some time off, go on holiday, go and play some sports, play a video game, watch TV. You're not gonna be watching the TV, you're gonna be thinking about that thing that you're anxious about. Practice gratitude, gratitude journal. And this is something that I hear about and actually ask people to do in my therapy sessions. But before we can start to be proud and grateful for the life we live, we have to understand what's missing from life. And this is what anxiety is all about. It's about going, I want that thing, but I don't know how to get there. All of these techniques so far have been about diffusing that anxiety. Because as a therapist, my job is to say, you want that thing, let's go and get it together. Let's go on an exploration together. You could spend all your time just reading this and never getting the answer you want, which is how to deal with the anxiety. The next question, how can I convince my partner to take the next steps? I find it really sad that they're using their therapy session in order to try and change something that they feel out of control of. And it's about me empowering that client to ask the question to their partner. Let's see what AI thinks. 
self-reflection. Yeah, understanding what you're all about, what you want, voice that with open communication. Both of these are fantastic in principle, but if we don't feel that we have the empowerment or control or confidence to advocate for ourselves, then we're still gonna be stuck. But great in terms of expressing your feelings and being specific with that person. Listen, yeah, I'm sure that person is, I hope, great. Address concerns, so these are all fantastic, but we talked about anxiety before. Even reading these, I feel anxious. So now I'm going, oh, do I have that space? Do I have the permission or felt permission to ask these questions? What's that person gonna say? How am I able to get through this? Show patience and respect. Yep, I, mean, I hope that person who they're speaking to in their relationship with my client would also allow that person the space and give them the respect by asking those questions. Mutual agreement, fantastic. Yeah, you need to get that, that agreement together to go to those next steps. But something that hasn't been addressed yet is why it is that the client wants something which they don't have an option or empowerment to get. This whole thing so far from the AI software is helping to give that person the tools to open that dialogue, but is not understanding the intricacies of that relationship, why it's so hard for that client to voice their opinion on, on why it is that it hasn't gone to the next step yet. Are they actually in a relationship together which is gonna work? That's a really hard question to ask, but something that needs to be asked and also answered from the client because it doesn't feel like they're on the same page. From my experience, I know that the clients that come and ask me this question feel exhausted, they feel tired, they've been stuck in this purgatory of not moving forward or in the way that they want to, hoping that, that their partner is gonna ask them the question or give them what they want. And we really need to first understand if that client knows what they want and it's the right thing for them. And next, if it is, if their partner doesn't want the same thing, how do they exit that relationship? Because you can ask someone to do something, but you can't force them to. All these steps are great, but you need a lot of self-assurance confidence and also a role play with someone else to understand the sort of objections and feelings and emotions and, and situations that might come up. But to hope that you're gonna change someone's mind isn't realistic. You can ask, but if they don't want it, let's work on the next steps after that. And the last question I'm gonna ask ChatGPT today is about self-diagnosis. ADHD is being diagnosed more and more through doctors, but also self-diagnosed and maybe even diagnosed through AI. So I wanna get a picture about how people are gonna be instructed using AI to deal with their ADHD. Medication, yeah, fantastic. This is why you should go to a doctor to get diagnosed properly. Next, behavioral therapy, again, CBT, behavioral therapy just generally in terms of understanding how you deal with the ADHD and hopefully to build in new techniques in order to grow and develop using the ADHD to your advantage rather than seeing it as something that's limiting you. Great, organization tools, yeah. Time management strategies, setting timers and alarms. I mean, that's, I found with working with the ADHD, even setting a timer is too much. And once the timer goes off, it gets muted and then the ADHD takes control again. Unfortunately, it needs a little bit more than just alarms and timers. It needs some more implementation and understanding how the ADHD impacts and affects that individual person. Time blocking, yeah, so specific blocks, that's great, but you set a block in your timer, you set a block in your calendar, and then, again, the ADHD comes in. It's more than just a timetable, it's about getting a picture of those triggers, what it is that draws your attention away, understanding the loop of the ADHD, how the hyper-focus takes hold of you, what are those triggers, what is it that keeps you in that hyper-focus state? Lifestyle adjustments, regular exercise, healthy eating, adequate sleep. Yeah, these are great in terms of the physiological needs, the building blocks of motivation. We need to make sure those are all ticked, but there's nothing there about connecting to your personal story, about why it is that you are not looking after your needs adequately. And this is why any mental health issue anyone has needs to be met with a personal approach, because all these answers that we're getting from AI are so broad and generic that it's not making it personal. You can't attach yourself to any of this stuff. It's all great to know. It makes you feel good in the moment, just like any list. It makes you feel good when you see it, but connecting it to your personal story. And the way I like to think about therapy is I'm setting up the dominoes and during the week, as a client, you're knocking them down. Then we build them together and it's about that, that constant moving, that constant building and understanding each other and the plight of the client that we start to get some movement and some change. This video has been about understanding if the AI is it ever gonna replace therapy. And right now, at least, it doesn't seem like it's going to because it's giving us some really great information about how we can start to improve our lives, connect with ourselves, 
and make those next steps to grow and develop. But the part of therapy that promotes the most amount of change is the connection between the therapist and the client. With AI, again, loads of information, but there's no connection there. Why don't you let me know what questions you're asking AI about your mental health, and maybe I can do a video about those in the future. If there's anything else that you think would be helpful in order to understand what you're going through, leave it in the comments and I can answer it in a future video. Otherwise, I'll see you next time. Take care, bye-bye.